the contact page. Um, and again, you know, this is they're sort of moving towards a purchase at this stage. If they're here, they're interested in some way. Um, obviously, there's many different reasons they might be wanting to contact you. If you have preferences for people contact you in different ways, like if you if you have a certain process for booking a call and making an order um, and that's maybe hosted on a different part of your website that's in a shop direct them there um, if you know if you have different processes for each of these different types of um of contact requesting more information having a you know posing a question maybe sending in a complaint or praise if you have clear processes and you deal with those in different ways or via different channels make sure that's clear again make it easy for them and um, i'm a big fan of contact forms on um, websites again it's just another you're reducing another step that they have to take to get in touch with you you're making it easy you're reducing friction so make the contact form as minimal and simple to use as possible i usually don't you don't really need any more than you know their name their contact information um and their message and it's really important to make sure that you have that set up properly so that you actually receive their message to your email. So in the back end of your website, just check your settings and make sure that's all um, that's all set up properly. And finally, if you find that you're getting the same questions or the same types of questions over and over again, that's like a massive, massive, you know, sire and a blaring sign that that should be a piece of content that you create, whether it's a blog post or whether it's a permanent page on your website. If people have the same question over and over again, that's, you know, that's, that's a gap in the knowledge that you're giving them. So, um, you know, FAQs, great um, content ideas. 